Hi, welcome. This is Dr. Lee Mancini. I'm the Chief of the Division of Sports and Exercise Medicine at the UMass Chan Medical School and the UMass Memorial Health Medical Center. I'm an Associate Professor in the Department of Family Medicine and Community Health and the Director of the UMass Primary Care Sports and Exercise Medicine Fellowship. Today, I'll be talking about common fracture description terms. This is part of AMSSM's Family Medicine Radiology Project. I have nothing to disclose. The objectives for this talk are to introduce everyone to common fracture terms and to go over common different types of fractures. Key points in describing a fracture. You need to make sure you correctly describe which bone is involved, where on the bone, is it the mid shaft, is it distal, is it proximal, what type of fracture, and then how is the fracture aligned? The first term is displacement. So displacement describes the relationship between the distal and the proximal fragment. Displacement can be described as either millimeters or a percentage. It also can be described as a non-displaced fracture. If you use the term minimally displaced, that means that it is displaced by three millimeters or less. Angulated. <clears throat> Angulation refers to the relationship of the two fractures in either the frontal or the sagittal plane. You need to have views that are both that are 90 degrees apart. So you need two views, typically an AP view and a lateral view. When we talk about angulation, we talk about whether it is an acceptable amount of angulation or, <clears throat> or it is an unacceptable amount of angulation. If something is angulated too far, then it tends to have a risk that we need to take this it to surgery. <clears throat> Apposition. Apposition is another type of displacement, but instead of talking about where angulation was bending, now we're talking about the two ends of the bones. If there's shortening of the bone itself, and that changes and affects the length of the bone. On this top picture, you can see the image on the far left has end-to-end -end apposition. The second picture to the left has a 50% apposition. And then the third picture shows bayonet or side-to-side -side apposition where the two pieces are touching, but there's 0% overlap. And then the last picture is no apposition. In this bottom X-ray, you can see what we would call probably a minimally displaced or um, less than a 50% end-to-end apposition of this mid-shaft fracture of the tibia. Comminuted fractures are fractures that are in multiple fragments. A simple fracture, as you see here on the left, in this fracture of the tibia, has just two parts, one a distal part and a proximal part. On the right, you can see a comminuted fracture of the femur where it's broken into multiple pieces. One type of comminuted fracture is a segmental fracture. In this case, you can see a segmental fracture of the tibia where there are three distinct fragments where the tibia has been broken into a distal fragment, a middle fragment, and a proximal fragment. Here you see an avulsion fractures. Avulsion fractures are when a tendon or a ligament pulls and tugs a piece of the bone off. These are commonly found on the hip, the elbow, and the ankle. On the top right, you can see a picture of an avulsion fracture of the, the base of the fifth metatarsal. And on the bottom left x-ray, you can see an avulsion fracture from the hip. An intraarticular fracture describes a fracture that goes into the joint space itself. This leads to long-term prognosis of increased risk of osteoarthritis developing there. It also leads to cartilage damage on the articular cartilage in the joint surface. On the right, you can see an intraarticular fracture of the tibia going into the knee joint, and on the left, an intraarticular fracture into the proximal interphalangeal joint on a finger. Transverse describes types of fractures and the relationship of the fracture to the long axis of the bone. Typically, fractures are described as transverse, where it goes straight across, perpendicular, 
there's also short oblique and long oblique fractures as well. The transverse fracture here on the bottom left is a transverse fracture of the mid shaft of the tibia. A short oblique fracture, which is the middle picture uh, on this example on the bottom left image, is a slanted fracture where it tends to be at a low angle, usually between 30 and 60 degrees. And this is relative to the long axis of the bone, so it is closer to the horizontal. Here you can see a short oblique fracture of the mid shaft of a humerus on the image on the right. A long oblique fracture is a fracture that's less than 30 degrees, again, relative to the long vertical axis of the bone, so it is closer to vertical. One common misconception is people can confuse long oblique fractures with spiral fractures, uh, and they are not the same. Spiral fracture is a fracture that happens from a mechanism of extreme twisting and rotational force. Again, it's not a long oblique fracture, and it's where the force is applied at any other angle to the bone other than a 90 degree angle. On the bottom left, you see a spiral fracture of the mid shaft of the humerus, and on the right, you see an x-ray of a spiral fracture of the distal tibia. Compression fractures are common in cancellous flat bones, i.e. the spongy bones in the body. Vertebrae are a common site of compression fractures. Um, also, we see this in you know, force or if there's an issue of osteoporosis or osteopenia, that increases the risk of compression fractures. You can also see a compression fracture at the ends of long bones, such as the tibia or the femur. Here are images of a compression fracture of a lumbar vertebrae. Impaction fractures are fractures where there's a direct force that goes down the length of the bone. Think about something hitting here and the fracture impacted and what we call telescoping the fragment where one fragment goes inside the other. On the top right, this is an X-ray of a impaction fracture of the proximal humerus by the humeral head. And on the bottom left, you see an impaction fracture of the distal radius. And these usually occur with high trauma or high forces. Pathologic fractures are fractures at a site where the bone has been weakened. The most common uh, type of these are tumors, um, but you can also have this from osteoporosis. The image on the right is a pathologic fracture on the distal radius in the hand and wrist. And on the left is a pathologic fracture of the proximal femur. So in summary, we went through common fracture description terms, <clears throat> displace fractures, angulation, apposition, simple versus comminuted, segmented comminuted fractures, avulsion fractures, interarticular fractures, transverse fractures, oblique short fractures, oblique long fractures, spiral fractures, compression fractures, impaction fractures or impact fractures, and pathologic fractures. Thank you so much for watching and for your attention.